Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Welcome to uh, Dumb SEO Questions, episode 407. Each week uh, we meet here to review the uh, questions asked and answered on the uh, Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group. Um, with us today, we have Tim Kappa and Masataki Wasa. Uh, Tim is a Google uh, product expert on the Google My Business community. Uh, he's based in uh, Corby, about 100 miles north of London. And um, he can be found at onlineownership.com. And Masataki is webmaster of whatsaweb.net. Uh, he's also a Google top contributor um, in the AdSense uh, community. And um, he can be found at wasawweb.net. All right, so we have seven questions tonight. And uh, let's look at the first one. Well, if, if this page will open for me, I will. That's better. Nadim Sayal uh, asked this question titled, Some people are scraping my every new post. Um, he said, Some people are scraping my every new post, brackets, uh, uh, the complete post from start to end by. Uh, RSS feed and at the end of the post just leaving a link with the anchor text source link. Is this uh, good or bad for search engine optimization? Uh, how can I stop these guys? Uh, um, please, um, your suggestions. I think Michael hit the nail on the head. Don't publish the full feed, you know, the entire thing. Um, just do like a snippet intro. Um, and then Mike goes further with IP addresses and server log files and blocking the person, the offender. Yeah, and lower down, I think there's still sort of the other answer to this question, which is, um, you know, leave it. Um, so long as they are crediting you, it might be to your benefit. I tend to agree with Mike. Uh, I tend to agree with, agree with Michael here. I think you should stop um, publishing the full feed. You would want um, the visitor to come to your site. But I'm not so sure whether your time would be well spent sort of trying to prevent this from happening, if that makes sense. So um, sure, don't publish a full feed, but then after that, stop worrying about it if you want to take action, um, what you can do if this is monetized, this, the site that's uh, publishing your feed, um, if the site is being monetized with AdSense, you can report that site to AdSense. And that might be um, an effective way of stopping someone from copying your content. Thank you, Mr. Taki. And Tim, and thank you. There's also one other possibility that um, Nadim could check, um, and it, it could be that um, he's um, allowing um, um, his site to be publicly available um, um, from an IP address. Um, so if 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 he if he's doing that, somebody else could put, just put a simple entry in DNS, um, and like the the IP address that, that 
sites being published at, as an A record um, on any other domain. And, of course, everything that uh, he uh, publishes um, letter for letter would be uh, uh, repeated uh, at, at the, the new domain. That's a possibility you might, you might check. Anyway, let's uh, have a look at the next. Um, we're on to uh, number two uh, uh, in our run list. Um, James Griffin said, is being an indication that I can expect my ranking to increase in Google. He said, I'm, I'm on page two in Bing, page eight in Google for the same keywords. Um, a really new site. Is being an indication that I can expect my ranking to increase in Google? Unfortunately not. Um, uh, two different algorithms, two different companies. Um, uh, I'm guessing the good thing is that obviously they've been able to find it, search it, crawl it. Um, yeah, but it's not an indication, unfortunately. And uh, of course, there's Michael Martinez's comment uh, Bing and Google use totally distinct. Algorithms and databases, you can't use one search engine to predict how the other will respond to your content. Okay, will we move on to the next? Okay. Number three on our run list is uh, titled Claiming the Knowledge Panel from Nico Anastasio. Nico said, hi, everybody. My website has ended up on the Google Knowledge Graph card on the right side of the results. The problem is that the card is about homonymous hom music group rather than my website. How can I either change the card using my website and my info or remove the uh, website link uh, from their card? Anonymous. Okay. Um, so you can claim your knowledge uh, graph. Um, you will typically see, you know, it, it will actually say claim this knowledge graph. Um, if it doesn't, it, it, typically your, your website. And, and the way you would do is your site needs to be verified with um, Google Search Console. Um, and then you can actually edit the, 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 the knowledge graph panel. Um, limited edit, edit as such. Um, it's not a full on, you know, you're not like you can go and change and add and it, it, it's limited functionality, but you can claim it based upon the website that is linked, uh, as well as the one that you've um, uh, verified with Search Console. Excellent, thank you, Tim. Yeah, it's, it's an interesting case, isn't it? Because it seems as if they're two separate things sharing the same name. So the info panel is sort of a mixture of the two. So I wonder what, what happens in that instance. You know, uh, will Google create two separate entries? So each for the group, each for each group, and then have the correct information bundled together. Mm -hmm. Well, I didn't know, but... Uh... It's certainly interesting. Certainly is. I agree. 
All right, let's go to number four on our run list. This one from Kunjal Chohan. Uh, Kunjal said, um, how reliable uh, is, uh, or this is the title of it, how reliable uh, is the Google Search Console linking sites report? Um, because wh when I check that uh, in Google Search Console in linking sites, it shows 1,000 sites versus when I check the same in third-party tools like Ahrefs or SEMrush, it shows more. So is it that uh, Google Search Console only shows a limited data on linking sites? Or does it show the ones it has indexed? Um, or does it show the ones that I had indexed and counted as a linking site? For example, 404 bank links that were indexed didn't show in Google's Search Console linking reports. Should point out that uh, um, 404 backlinks uh, is is by definition not possible um, to be. Like, it's, um, once the site is um, a 404, um, it's it doesn't carry a backlink and uh, it, it's not indexed. Yeah. Sorry. So, so Search Console uh, doesn't always show you everything. Uh, because it depends on how much. Um, it also tends to filter out, like if there's a footer link on a bloody site that's got another five, 10,000 pages, um, it, it filters that out as one, um, or it, at least it used to. Um, you know, so there, there's a whole lot of, uh, a whole variety of reasons. Um, but, but no, um, but also, you uh, alternatively, you'll go to these other tools and click on a link, and it just doesn't it doesn't exist on that page anymore. So you know, the tools are inaccurate in that sense. Third party tools, um, and equally, you know, yeah. So you, you're never going to have a match up on them. The, 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 what you need to do is combine it. Excellent. Thank you, Tim. Uh, any more on this one? Number five on our run list is titled, uh, What is uh, um, a better practice to, to no index to optimize for crawl budget? Um, it's another one from Kunjul Chohan. Um, and uh, he goes on to, to write a couple of bullet points. Uh, um, one is using a plugin, adding no index meta robots uh, tag um, to a specific page, and using robots text and adding those pages uh, there. Um, he said, for example, if I have uh, an e-commerce uh, website having hundreds or maybe up to a thousand. Uh, tag pages uh, that haven't gotten more than one impression in, in the uh, last uh, 16 months. I don't want to no index uh, all of the tag pages, just some of them. Yeah, and so it's like, don't think about crawl budget in the sense of, do you know what I mean? Um, if, if, if you if, you know, Google will tell you in your search console whether they can't handle it. You know, whether your site is slow, whether they can't crawl it. Also, Google is pretty good at determining what your site can handle, and then they, they, they limit it. Okay. So if your site is actually running some decent decent host, et cetera, et cetera, you know, crawl budget shouldn't be an issue. So in that sense. Um, you know, tags can be pretty useful. Now, I know you say some have never, you know, had an impression, blah, 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 blah. The point is, can you actually optimize them? Can you use them? I mean, typically what I'll do at the beginning uh, with, with, a, with a project, I'll have a quick look at them, see how they set up, things like that. Um, and then typically I will 
no index them. And then over time, as you're working through the project, then I will look at the more popular ones, then uh, actually make them searchable once I've optimized them properly. Because of course, then you want to start interlinking things like this. But if they are just, you know, you know, just the typical stuff, everybody's chucked in a freaking tag on some things and half the time they're not even worth it. You know, uh, like, you know, it depends, but yes, don't do it in robots TXT, do it in, um, uh, do it in the actual page itself. Excellent. Okay. Let's go to a number six on our run list. Vinay Bhardwaj um, asked the question titled, what recent Google updates have the most uh, impact on the search engine results pages? Vinay goes on to say, in your opinion, um, how do you address those updates in your work? So there are literally hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of updates. Um, the question shouldn't be about the actual update. Like, you know, the question is, is, you know, after an update, if there is an issue or you perceive an issue or all of a sudden that you, you know, you have a, your site completely tanks or, certain areas of the site tank and i'm and, and of course i'm putting the caveat in here you know i'm not talking within the first few days because a lot of the times things will fluctuate up down and then stabilize again i'm saying is uh, after let's say a week to two week period you're still like totally buggered after let's say two weeks and uh, if you do have, uh, if you do look at other sites or manage other sites, those other ones are, are fine. Then, you know, there's been an issue with this particular update regarding to that. Then, of course, you don't know what the updates typically are. Google sometimes gives some kind of indication, but very little. And then the indication they do give is typically not um, but the SEO community, you know, does, does put out stuff on what they think has impacted. And then a lot of sites will do comparisons and say, this seems to be impacted here. Yeah. But the, the, the point being is to figure out what of your pages were impacted or what parts of the site. And, and then, you know, uh, look at it and then go, uh, yeah, okay, quality wise isn't there or, um, yeah, I've been a dick with links or whatever the case may be. But the point is, it's, you know, you don't jump to any conclusions. You need to wait until things have stabilized before you can even see that it made an impact. Um, and then, and then come up with a, with a game plan. Yep. Fair enough. All right. Um, let's look at our last one. It's from Kevin Schlosser. Um, it's titled Google's penalties are in place to combat, combat unnatural strategies. Uh, he said, uh, is it fair to think that Google's penalties are in place to combat unnatural strategies? How does this apply to paying for backlinks? or guest posts, for example. Uh, he, he said, I mean, are they just trying to catch on to uh, such things? And all the while, uh, SEO uh, resellers are in actuality simply gaming their system effectively. Um, what's uh, your take? Um, so you say, how does it apply paying for backlinks? You can pay for backlinks. It's a question on how you 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 um, uh, qualify them to Google, and you know Google is very specific on what on, on what they are. So you can have um, 
uh, user gener you know, rel user generated content. You can have rel sponsored, as in paid, or rather on, a, or you know, on a uh, on an affiliate or advertising side. Or you can do rel no follow if you have you know paid for them, or or they use generated content as in comments and stuff. So you know they have a pretty good thing in place, uh, for, and it's not necessarily about combating it. You should. Um, qualify what that kind of link is, right? Um, if it was 100% natural, then, you know, like still, it's up to the user who actually recommended your site or placed a link on their, on their site to your site. It's also up to them to, 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 to place it in, you know? Um, but the, the point being is that over time, uh, as Google starts detecting a pattern, and it's not necessarily just with your site, they will detect a pattern of links because if someone's selling links, then they will find, you know, multiple outbound links on different sites, etc., to different things. And it's quite easy for Google to determine, you know, what sites are actually accepting things. And don't forget, there's like an actual web spam team that can go, all right, look, um, you know, this, this site looks a bit, suspicious and just does a little bit of a reach out and uh, hey presto all of a sudden the reach out says yeah you can buy a link and it's going to cost you this and it's like okay geez thanks for the information so just you know like you, you've got to obviously and and like you i know you're talking about resellers but the point being here kevin is that more and more and more and more people like if these sites could be slammed um, their 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 customers could have been taken down with 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 penalties or whatever the case would be, or or actually been impacted negatively on the page that the actual you know link is linking to. Um, but you typically don't hear them screaming or crying out because then you've kind of just admitted to paying for links, um, and in which case the guy that's selling it doesn't really have a problem. He just keeps selling the shit. You know, they, they, they don't have to be morally, morally you know, obligated to you. So it's not like they're taking other resellers. It's, you know, do your due diligence, you know, and, 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 and that's pretty much as simple as that. Excellent. Thanks, Tim. All right. Will we move on? Yep, it's that time again. It, it's thank you for watching time. Um, I'd like to thank uh, all of the people uh, that answered questions on the um, um, Dam SEO questions Facebook group. Um, and of course, you guys uh, turning up week after week. Um, and, and uh, uh, holding the fort, um, it, it, it's just so so much appreciated. Um, we'll be back yeah, at the same time next week um, to do this um, all again. Um, but for now, um, it's uh, good night. I think so.